Hi everyone, it's Andrea and we're here today again with another Marilyn scrapbook tour. This is volume 12. It's still using at the moment these W.H. Smith's albums. We, we do use these all the way through um, until recently, other than the odd one. So, excuse me a sec. We'll get started on this one and see what's in this one. So again, this is a lovely picture by Milton H. Green of Marilyn. Okay, so we're still in September, well, we're October now, 2000, and this is the stage and television of a day, this long strip here, and this is a, a review of the seven year itch. And again, here's the Mail on Sunday's review for the seven year itch. Obviously they didn't like it because of the title. Such a pretty poor show. And it just, uh, saying that cinema's taking over Theatre Land, which is not quite correct because the Seven Rich actually started out as a play, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. I think it more, more it's having to go Daryl Hannah not being up to snuff. Okay, and on the next page we've got the Sunday Times Culture Magazine, a big picture of Joyce Carol Oates with regards to her appearance on the South Bank show, which was about her book, Blonde. Blah. Oh, I just hit the camera, that's what I think of that. Next one we've got Lucy Shows of Marilyn, which is from November. And this is um, Lucy Benjamin, who was in EastEnders. And she's just dressing up as Marilyn. I think we have a bit more of that later on, but I'm not sure. Next set of articles is quite uh, a sad set of articles. Um, uh, if you're watching this, Jackie, these are the articles I've mentioned before about Stephanie Lawrence that was in the UK when she passed. So, Monday, November the 6th, 2000, the tragic stage star obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. And there's a picture of Stephanie Lawrence in Mar uh, as Marilyn in the, the production um, that, uh, that she was in. Um... We have a, a two-page spread um, from the Daily Mail titled The Tragedy of the Fading Stage Star Who Thought She Was Marilyn Monroe, which is rubbish because she played lots of other people, uh, other uh, characters and it's an insult to Stephanie Lawrence to say she thought she was Marilyn because she didn't. She was just a brilliant actress. She was a big fan of Marilyn, but she was, I was lucky enough to see her live twice, um, in, first in Starlight Express when she played Pearl, and then later the first time she played Mrs. Johnston in Blood Brothers. Um, but there was more to her than just Marilyn. She played Marilyn in the stage production, Marilyn, and was very, very good at it. Um, so I think it doesn't do her justice, this article. I think it's, it's horrible. And then the next article, I've done it side anyways on, this is from the Daily Express. Um, suicide probe over West End star Stephanie because her death was very sudden. Nobody was expecting it. She hadn't been ill as far as we knew. Um, so basically they wanted to look and see whether or not it was likely she killed herself. Um, again, here she is wearing the gold lame dress but with her own natural blonde hair. Um, another obituary for Stephanie. This was the one that was in the Times just as actress who made her name in West End musicals and was a fine double for Monroe. So, very sad, a good brief overview of her career. Uh, the next one is, I don't think there's any more, Stephanie, I think that's it now. Uh, Moo La La, Marion Picks a Hot Property. These are about the Andre de Dienis pictures. That never happened, but there we go. And then the mirror, Marilyn romped in marriage bed saying that uh, it was room 323 at the Plaza Hotel, the Astor Suite. And that apparently Marilyn spent the night there with Kennedy, which is nonsense, but there you go, they have gotta put it in there because you know, God, God forbid anybody ever tells the truth next one is from a magazine called Essentials and this is, uh, remember we saw Lucy Benjamin dressed up as Marilyn a little while back. Um, this is the full article about her dressing up as Marilyn and how they did the makeup and everything. So, yeah, she doesn't actually look like Marilyn. 
her hair is nothing like Marilyn. She's just wearing a dress that's similar to Marilyn, but not exactly because it's not pleated. Um, but then who doesn't like to be, to dress up glamorous and, and pretend to be Marilyn Monroe? Who wouldn't? The next one is the one I got from the internet and it's from the Holly Grove newsletter. Holly Grove was the orphanage that Marilyn lived in when she was a child. And this one is a chat with Anna Strasberg, who is the lady who ran the Marilyn estate for a long time, who never met her. So I think getting her to talk about Marilyn is a load of bollocks really because she didn't know anything about her and never met her. Next article is from the Times, uh, 16th of December. A Wilder at Heart, this is about um, Billy Wilder. And of course it's all about him and that image of Marilyn in the dress. And of course he also directed something like it hot. This is just the top 100 actresses, number 24, Marilyn Monroe. I don't know where this one was from. Um, some internet article I got, I didn't write where it was from. Just saying that if you're looking for Marilyn Monroe, try the district attorney's office. Just people who have got famous names. For sale, the dress that shook JFK from the Mail on Sunday in 2001. This was saying that um, the Kennedy dress was going on sale, but it didn't. Um, I don't know where they got that from. It didn't go on sale until last year, in fact, 2016. Next article is BBC News, row over Monroe photos. And this is about the estate of Marilyn trying to block the commercial use of nude photos of her that were due to be auctioned. And these are the Tom Kelly ones. Uh, the estate disputes, the signature gives, gives the right, uh, basically that the estate were disputing the fact that Marilyn signed a release saying that they could use them for whatever they wanted to. Um, but there you go. And it's all, it's all about that article problem and again here we have another article on it which is the battle over the early nude pictures of Marilyn this is from the Express it tells the same, same story about the problems of selling those nudes I'm just going to cover it up here so we don't get banned Marilyn under the hammer again this is about uh, the nude photos of Marilyn and the person up here that is Tom Kelly Jr so we're just gonna just do that so We'll turn the page. Now this is an internet article from, I don't know where this is from again, just saying let dead, dead celebrities lie, not go into sales. Uh, and again, it's about the sale of the red velvet photos that Tom Kelly took. And basically, you shouldn't be selling them, but why not, you know, come on. They've been selling Marilyn since the day she died. They will continue to sell her forever. And here's the proof. The Tombstone Top 10 from Wednesday the 14th of March 2001. This is something that's released every year and it tells who's the, the biggest earning dead celebrities. So number one is Elvis Presley, number two, John uh, Charles Schultz, number three, John Lennon, number four, Theodore Giselle, and, and so on. Um, and it's just all about it, about how they are. So she's not in the top 10, but she is in the top 20, I believe. She probably says somewhere. Yeah, she's 12th place, so. And next page uh, is BBC News. Poland sells Monroe photos. Again, this is about um, the Polish government said sent off some photos that they had of Marilyn taken by Milton H. Green. And on the next page is the look in the mirror mag, it's the Saturday mirror um, from April 2001 mystery of the missing mementos. Um, and basically this was uh, looking out for certain things, it's called celebrity relics, I don't think I ever saw it. And it was like Marilyn's stilettos. Well, she had lots of stilettos, but... Uh, and they're all over the place now, owned by various people. Next one is again from the Daily Mail Weekend magazine, and this is Hollywood Knives. For the first time, the extraordinary cast list of movie legends who depended on plastic surgery for their glitting careers. Now, with Marilyn, she had very little done anyway. It was just had a bit of her nose and something in her chin, an implant, but that was all she did. I mean, it wasn't much, not like what they have to done today, so. 
but that was again about a TV program. The next one is from the Mirror and it's Sunday the April the 29th and it's Barry's Oscar. This is Barry Norman and it's his critic, his verdict on 30 years of Marilyn. And if there was an Oscar for most uh, studying uh, actress, it would be Marilyn, apparently. Which is probably very true, because, you know, why not? Again, on this page, we have a picture of Marilyn and Norma Jean. Uh, again, this is about the Hollywood Knives documentary. I don't think I ever saw it. Yes, she looks a lot different, but, you know, change of hair colour and a load of makeup will do that to you. And also, she looks like she's lost a bit of weight there, that's all. The next one is from the Digital Cable and Satellite Times, May 2001, and it's Marilyn Monroe, a legend. This is about a documentary that came out called The Death of Marilyn Monroe, which was on the Biography Channel. <coughs> Biography Channel doesn't actually exist anymore, I don't think. Um... I stopped showing proper biographies years and years ago anyway, especially in the UK. The same with T TCM Turner Classic Movies. They're no longer classics, they're just rubbish. Entertainment TV or whatever, Entertainment Now or whatever that bloody channel's called. Again, used to have lots of great documentaries about classic Hollywood. Now it's all Kardashians and rubbish like that, so... Excuse my rant. <laughs> uh, then the next one is an internet article from TV Guide Online. Um, from May 2001, I Remember Marilyn, which is about her first husband, James Doherty. Um, basically, it's because he'd recently published his second book, To Norma Jean Would Love Jimmy, which we do have a copy of in the collection. And then there's also a little bit about other stars and other people remembering Marilyn. So we've got Tony Curtis and Don Murray and Jane Russell. <clears throat> this one's going to be a bit longer, this one, because there's some good articles in here. This is LA Life online, and this one says, See Marilyn in black and white in her own living colour. And it's about, um, basically, the release of the films in the Diamond Collection, uh, saying that her most famous film was black and white, which it was, some like it hot. But they were releasing all the the DVDs, the, the films on DVDs, the 20th Century Fox, and, of course, they had the... <coughs> The doc documentary about her last film, Something's Got to Give, which is called The Final Days, I believe. It's a very good, long documentary about that making of the movie with some great footage. Next page again, amateur photographer. They seem to like Marilyn in that uh, magazine. Um, unpublished photos of Marilyn up for sale. And again, these are the ones that Poland was selling that were owned, that were taken by Milton H. Green. And they were bought by Poland's foreign debt agency from a US businessman in 1995, apparently. There you go. Another one from LA Life Online is um, The Monroe Doctrine Was Marilyn Really a Victim? Um, and again, it's just looking into Was Marilyn a Victim? Um, I'm just having a look to see what this was about. The way people have written about her over the years, the way she was treated by her mother, um, and again the TV movie Blonde, which was based on the Joyce Carol Oates bleh, fiasco book. Hello Life again, Blonde on Blonde. Again, this is about the uh, uh, adaptation of Joyce Carol Oates' rubbish. Um, with Poppy Montgomery as Marilyn. Now, Poppy Montgomery did as best as she could with what she was given. I'm never going to like that book or that, that TV show. Daily Mail, Letters, Susan's Knife did not launch Marilyn. So, this is just somebody's um, thought on it. So it basically says, um, he's right to question, this is a reviewer, the programme's unreasoned claim that it was plastic surgeons who propelled Monroe to stardom in, by 1950. Until better evidence is offered, the BBC's claim that by building up her jawline and extending her chin, Dr Pangman uh, improved the proportions of her face. The fact is that she did have a, a small bit of uh, cartilage removed from her nose and um, she had something implanted into her chin. But it was nothing major. She still, whoops, I nearly lost my orange juice then. She still would have made it. But there we go. 
Next one is Yahoo News. Hollywood Wonders, Marilyn Monroe at 75. So this is about her 75th birthday. And what would have happened had she lived? We've had those before. They do them every year. Next page is again another uh, internet article. Cinema Savant, Some Like It Hot, The War Between Billy and Marilyn. So this is a bit of um, on-set information about the making of Some Like It Hot. It was a nice big article actually, as you can see. Several pages long with some great pictures. You can see why I wanted to keep these because, you know. Amateur photographer again. Um, this is a review of The Unpublished Marilyn by James Haspiel. So just a little bit about that. Which is nice. And the next one is from Anna Nova. Uh, this again is an internet article. Just about Marilyn Monroe. Final movie seems to feature in a documentary. And this is about the final days. Which came out as part of the Diamond Collection box set. And here again. Yahoo News. Happy birthday Marilyn. And again about her 75th birthday. And it's all about the, the, the fans having parties and Marilyn memorabilia and lookalikes and, and all that. So it's quite a long article. Another one, Marilyn Monroe lookalike contest draws Hollywood hopefuls. So again, this is about her 75th birthday when they are held. And, and the anniversary of it is May 23rd. So yeah, I held a lookalike contest, which they tend to have every year. Um, basically just about the lookalikes. No pictures, sadly. I like it when they put the pictures in. And finally, um, BBC News Online. Monroe memorabilia on show. This was from May 2001. And this is about the Ripley's Believe It or Not collection. And being on display. So it just has just letting you know that the Ripley's were putting them on show in Los Angeles and her makeup case, the sweater she wore with the George Barris thing, uh, among other items that they bought. They now obviously own the Kennedy dress as well. So that is book 12. There is no more in that book. We still have a lot of books to go. I'm not actually sure. I will count them up and let you know in the next uh, episode which will be episode 13. I do hope you're enjoying this overview of, of them. I know some people have said they're really enjoying it, so I will continue to do this um, sporadically throughout the next few months. So uh, that is book 12. Uh, I hope you have a lovely evening and I will see you all soon. Bye.